Hey everyone, I'm finally ready for the aluminum melt and pour and I'm super excited about it. I've spent a lot of time designing a process that I think has the potential to give some pretty good quality aluminum from just old saved up cans. A lot of you have mentioned using better quality casting aluminum to start with, things like engine heads and tire rims, and I totally agree with you, but this project was born about five years ago when I just started collecting beer cans, and in the five years I've saved up quite a bit of beer cans. So I'm going to be using the cans, get the melt as clean as possible, and add some elements to alter the material to work well for casting and machining parts. And finally, I'll be able to pour and cast my own custom aluminum alloy. So let's jump right in and this should be pretty fun. Quick reminder that likes and subscribes really help the channel grow so I can keep the content coming. I love to see your questions and comments down below and if you want to help the channel directly, you can do that over on Patreon. All right, let's get to it. First, I've made some mods to the shredder from the original video, which I'll link down below and I'll walk you through those mods. First, this shaft now runs through the frame to the back side where there's another corresponding bearing that lines up and this should help keep that shaft in better alignment. Next, I've added some scrapers here in the channels to keep aluminum shreds from building up in these. I went with bolts because I'll be able to adjust the depth into the channel and we'll see how well this works out. There was also a lot of flexing in this front plate here. You could see when it came under a lot of torque, the back of the motor would twist out like this. So I've added this back mounting plate here, connecting the motor to the frame. This should hopefully keep everything parallel and in alignment. The one major thing I haven't done yet, which is a really good idea, is offset the blades so that they're sort of like a helix and each set of blades rotates a bit offset from each other. And this would help smooth out any spikes of torque and I think it would run a lot better. But I don't currently have any of the 6 mil plate that I use to cut these out of. Once I get my next steel delivery, I'll add that to my to-do list. And other than that, I just did some little things like painting it and oiling it. So I think it's ready for the next test and I've got a mountain of cans to shred. So let's go see how it handles that. I've got the shredder mounted up on a barrel to catch the shreds. First, I'll try a couple cans just to make sure all the mods work well. All right, everything looks great. The motor's not flexing anymore. The bottom shaft doesn't seem to have too much tension on it. And the scrapers are clearing out those channels really well. And I made this quick and dirty hopper out of cardboard. And I'll just throw this on the shredder so I can try to plow through the pile. All right, I think I'm gonna call it there for this batch. That is a lot of cans, the barrel's a little over halfway full, and I don't wanna fill it up too much and make it more difficult for the washing process. So now onto the washing. I made some hot water with my wood stove water heater, and I'll link those videos below. I've been soaking the shreds for a couple days now, and I've changed out the water a couple times just to get rid of most of the gunk. Now I'm gonna throw them into the hot water and really agitate them a bunch to give it a final cleaning, and then I'll rinse them out a couple times. And I hope you can see, but even after a couple days soaking and changing out the water a few times, the water is still really scummy. And so hopefully the aluminum's a lot cleaner when I actually go to melt it, and I've removed all of this scuzz from the melt. After washing them out thoroughly, I'll drain the barrel, spread them out so I can rinse them off really well, and then leave them out to dry. So now I have a ton of clean, dry aluminum shreds, and the next thing I wanna do is crush them back down before melting. If I can crush them down into little cubes of about two inches or 50 mil, it'll help with the melting process in several ways. I can put the cubes in front of the exhaust to preheat them, and each cube should have probably eight or nine cans worth of metal in them, so it's easy just to add that much to the kiln in one go, and it'll also reduce surface area, which should help reduce oxidation during the melt. So to do that, I've built a little accessory for my hydraulic forging press. This is the bottom piece for the press, and it starts out here with this funnel on top that I can just load the scraps in. And then underneath here, there's a two inch cube that has a front door that can move and then a handle on the door so that I can hold it close with some leverage as it's compacting. And then up above there's this piece which is two inches square and this is basically a ram that fits into that two inch cube and squishes it down. So this will just be squishing the aluminum down into the form And once it's full, I can just pull out the cube and start with another one. 
they vary a bit in weight, but this one, for example, is about 290 grams or almost two thirds of a pound. And so this would be about 20 cans. So I've got just short of seven pounds here or a little over three kilos, and this should be good enough for one melt. With the cubes ready to go, I'm just about ready for the melt, and I'll quickly walk you through all the other pieces I have that I'll be using during the melt. I made all of these except for the slotted spoon here, which is just solid stainless steel, and I'll be using this for skimming out dross and slag. We've got two sets of tongs here. This set can reach down from the top to pull the crucible out of the kiln, and then I can set it down into these tongs, which I can actually use for the pour. I've got two molds here, and these are the rough shapes of the parts I need. And then I've got this wand here, which is a stainless steel tube. It's capped here at the end with some holes drilled out and then hooked up to a hose. And I'll be getting into this near the end of the melt. So now I'll go get the kiln fired up and preheating, and we're finally gonna get this melt done. Okay, we're at a good temperature now, so I'm gonna start preheating the aluminum. Everything that goes into the melt or the kiln is gonna be preheated just to avoid thermal shock and potential steam explosions. So now I'll skim off the dross and luckily it largely floats to the surface and this is just an oxide layer and impurities that contaminate the quality of the aluminum and I want to get it out of there. And now I'll skim off some more dross. I'll do this every time it starts to build up, just trying to keep the aluminum really clean and pure. Here I'm adding some borax as a flux, and it's going to dissolve oxides and impurities in the melt, which can then be skimmed off as more dross later on. Now we've got a pretty clean aluminum, I'll add a couple things to alter the alloy to make it a better material for making parts. Here I'm adding some pure silicon, and I'm aiming for about 7% by weight, and this helps increase the fluidity for better pouring. It also improves the strength and hardness of the alloy, and it's going to improve the machinability for later on. And then I'll add some copper, and I'm going for about 1% by weight, and this really boosts the strength and the hardness of the alloy. I'll stir these in for about 10 or 15 minutes to make sure they're well incorporated. And while I'm doing that, I'll be preheating the degassing wand. Okay, I've got the alloy about where I want it now. I just want to do one last step of really cleaning it up. So I'm going to degas it with some pure argon, which is just TIG welding gas. And I'm going to bubble it through the melt for about 10 or 15 minutes. And this is going to help reduce dissolved hydrogen and reduce porosity and improve the overall casting at the end. And while I'm degassing, I'll be preheating the mold. Okay, this is looking great and it's time to pour. I didn't have enough to fill this mold all the way to the top and there was none for the other mold. But what I did have looked to be a really good quality, especially for can metal. It was a bright, shiny, uniform color and it flowed really well while pouring it. So I'm really hopeful that this is gonna turn out well. So let's crack it open and see how it looks. And this looks really good to me. It's a uniform, glossy finish. There's no rough or pitted areas. I don't see any cracking. So I think this is actually gonna work out really well. 
And the only thing left to do is to start actually machining this down into the part I need for my logging winch build, which I'll be doing in another video coming soon. I'll be doing another pour at some point because I still need that other part, but I don't think I'd change anything in the process because I think this turned out about as good as it can for can metal. I'll also try a pour at some point with some cast aluminum, something like an old engine head. But for can metal, I think this is about as good as you can get it. I'd love to hear any comments or suggestions if you have any ideas on how to improve this even further. I hope you enjoyed the video or found it helpful. I'll be back with a follow-up to this plus a bunch of others. So I'll see you soon and thanks for watching.